Today I'm going to make YINMN Blue, which is the newest and one of the most expensive pigments in the world. It was discovered accidentally in 2009, and it's named after its chemical formula. Y is for yttrium, IN is for the metal indium, and MN is for manganese. Indium is a very soft metal which can be easily cut with scissors, which I think is pretty cool. In fact, indium is the only metal that's both soft enough and non-toxic enough for you to chew it in your mouth. Anyway, I start by dissolving some yttrium metal and indium metal in 8 molar hydrochloric acid to make yttrium chloride and indium chloride. Yttrium is a highly reactive transition metal and will dissolve pretty quickly, but indium is a fairly unreactive by comparison post-transition metal and it takes several hours to fully dissolve. Once they both do finally dissolve, the yttrium chloride has some particles in it that I filter off, while the indium chloride is completely clear and I simply transfer it to a new beaker. The next step will be to make yttrium hydroxide and indium hydroxide, which are both completely insoluble. To make these insoluble hydroxide salts, I add a 3 molar sodium hydroxide solution very slowly to each sample until I reach a pH of 9. You can see here that I'm doing the indium first while I wait for the yttrium to finish dissolving, but they both look pretty much identical. I also want to note that you don't really need to be that careful when you make the yttrium hydroxide, but when you make the indium hydroxide, it's really important that you don't exceed a pH of 9. This is because indium hydroxide will actually redissolve into an indium sodium double salt in excessively alkaline environments, which you really don't want. Anyway, once both of my hydroxide salts are finished, I load both of them into a Buchner funnel separately to isolate them by vacuum filtration. Once again, I do the indium first and then the yttrium. And this actually takes a good while because both salts have a slimy sort of snot-like consistency that's really good at gumming up the Buchner funnel. Regardless, once most of the liquid is gone, I transfer my samples to drying dishes and then dry them in an oven overnight at 80 degrees Celsius. This leaves me with clean, pure, yttrium hydroxide and indium hydroxide, and this is pretty much the hardest part of the entire process. One important thing that I want to point out now that I didn't think about at the beginning is that I didn't weigh my metals out before I dissolved them. Because of this, my end result was 4.33 grams of yttrium hydroxide and 6.56 grams of indium hydroxide. The problem here is that the recipe for YINMN blue requires roughly equal amounts of both, so I ended up with an excess of my indium hydroxide, so I'm not going to use all of it. To that end, the next step is to grab a mortar and pestle and grind together all of the yttrium hydroxide alongside 4.2 grams of the indium hydroxide and 0.64 grams of manganese dioxide. For the reaction to get a good yield, these need to be ground together as thoroughly as possible, and I keep grinding until I cannot feel any more grit whatsoever. The resulting powder is a light gray, and I transfer it to a ceramic vessel and then load that into a kiln. In order to fully react, this mixture needs to be cooked at 1200 degrees Celsius for 6 hours, and since I didn't want to run a kiln for just that, I'm loading it alongside several other pigments that I'm currently working on. Keep a lookout for videos on those pigments over the next week. I give the kiln a day to cool down, and when I come back, this is what my YINMN blue looks like, and my synthesis is now complete. My next step is to gently scrape it into another dish to begin the thorough cleaning process. This cleaning process is done to remove any unreacted byproducts from my pigment, and to do it, I load my pigment into a Buchner funnel and rinse it first with a 2 molar hydrochloric acid solution. This is then rinsed with water, and then rinsed again with a 2 molar sodium hydroxide solution, followed by another thorough water rinsing. This process is repeated twice to make sure that my pigment is completely clean, and then the resulting pigment is transferred to a drying dish and allowed to dry at 80 degrees Celsius for about 5 hours. This left me with the clean and pure pigment you saw at the very beginning of the video, and my final yield here was exactly 7.85 grams, and I'm not exactly sure what the percent yield on that would be, but I'm happy with the results. To finish this video, I'm going to do what I always do and grind some of this pigment together in a mortar and pestle with some linseed oil to make an oil paint. I'll get a molar someday. Um, in any case, this pigment is completely pure, while most store-bought pigments are very diluted by fillers. And the issue with that 
is that because this pigment is so extremely concentrated and so pure, it looks almost black on this piece of paper. To sort of remedy that so you guys can actually see the color of this pigment, I turn the saturation and the brightness up a little bit, so no, my hands don't actually look that pink. I also cut the video here and tried to dilute my blue pigment with an equal part of titanium dioxide, but this pigment is so unbelievably strong and so opaque that it didn't really make much of a difference. In any case, it looks a lot better in person, and this is without a doubt the most gorgeous blue pigment I've ever made. Um, I hope you guys found this interesting, and if you'd like to see more content like this, consider giving me a follow.